Hello and welcome to the city of Asheville, North Carolina. In 1792, a city called Morristown was established. In 1797, that city was renamed Asheville after North Carolina Governor Samuel Ashe. As a city in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Asheville was an outpost in 1797. Frontiersmen such as Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett traveled through in the early days. Asheville primarily served as the crossroads of the Indian trails on the plateau, surrounded by mountains and rivers on all sides. When the railroad arrived in the area in 1880, it transformed Asheville and Buncombe County into a resort and therapeutic health center. Asheville became a hub for visitors searching for a mountain escape, its population climbing to 10,000 permanent residents in 1890. Today, Asheville is known for a vibrant art scene and historic architecture. The downtown art district is filled with galleries and museums, and in the nearby River Arts District, former factory buildings are turned into breweries and studios. But today's objective was to chase one of the last Norfolk Southern P-87s out of Asheville Yard all the way to Bridgewater and back. We got started early in Norfolk Southern's Asheville Terminal. Trained P-87 would begin his day around 6 a.m. with his six empty cars for the Bridgewater chip mill. The main train station in Asheville was built around 1905. It survived the flood of 1916 and was raised after the final run of the Greensboro to Asheville Carolina Special on December 5, 1968. From Asheville, passenger service also went to New York, Cincinnati, and Murphy. At 6.20 a.m., the crew was ready to get their train moving. Around 7 a.m., the crew brought one of the last P-87s over the switch at the control point Biltmore. After getting on I-40, we caught the train once again in West Swannanoa. We hit the road and jumped ahead of the train again in Swannanoa, North Carolina.
The next spot was the high fill on the old Fort Loops, a piece of railroad that turns back towards itself several times as it climbs the grade across bridges and through tunnels. Within the loops, the 1879 built Andrews Geyser still shoots water into the air to memorialize Alexander Boyd Andrews, Vice President of the Western North Carolina Railroad. The train rounded the second eastbound loop and we caught it again at the 115.3 signals. We caught up with the train again just before he enters Old Fort, North Carolina. We photographed the train at Marion and caught him again coming into Bridgewater. Bristol Industries was founded in 1984. The chip mill was sold to a company out of Rutherford County, North Carolina a few years ago and is called the Bridgewater Chip Mill as of now. The main customer for the chip mill is the Evergreen Packaging Plant in Canton, North Carolina, which specializes in manufacturing paper products using wood chips and shavings from this mill.
11.20 a.m., one of the last Bridgewater chip trains left the plant heading towards Asheville. After leaving the Bridgewater Mill, we caught the train again in Marion, North Carolina. After taking photos only at Old Fort and Highfield, we caught the train again coming out of Jared's Tunnel. We made it back to Biltmore just in time to see one of the last P-87s roll back over the switches. We spoke to a longtime resident of Marion, North Carolina, to see what his views were on the last chip train coming through. What's your name? I'm Kyle, a Southern Rail fan on YouTube. Um, and how do you feel about that being the last chip train uh, to come through Marion? Well, it's definitely sad. I've seen a lot of changes as far as the, the railroads go in uh, Western North Carolina, and uh, I try to look at the positives all the time and, and hope that something uh, good will come out of it. And it's just like uh, you know the shutdown on the CSX line that happened several years ago. That was uh, pretty devastating, but uh, that line's bounced back, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, something positive will happen on the S line here, or AS line rather, here in uh, in Marion. But it's definitely sad to see that train go by. It's been a staple on this line. You know, everybody's uh, well, everybody that I know anyway called it the chipper, and it was a uh, just about a guarantee everything, uh, every day during the week that you'd see that train. So who knows what will become of the Asheville Yard and its trains. With new town signs and new rail in some places along the line, there has been talk of adding two new freight trains to the Asheville district in the future. But for now, it looks like freight railroading in the heart of the Blue Ridge is fading away for good.